Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Well, we're so pleased to have a wonderful representative from Faith Farm Ministries, and Judy Walters has been on our show before. Uh, Faith Farm Ministries is one of the best known organizations in South Florida. I guess it's because they do so much good then they don't ask very much. All they ask is if you bring your unwanted items or pick up wanted items that you, you will like that other people left. But more importantly, I always stress, just give them a dollar, give them $10, give them $20, give them $1,000. That's how they take care of over 400 people who have addictions. Every year, these people are there without any uh, without any any payment, they just do it, and they go there, and they get themselves straightened out. And Judy knows more about this than anybody that I know. So, Judy, when you first came to Faith Farm Ministries many years ago, were th- you didn't have s- for over 400 uh, students, did you? I believe it was 350 at the time. We had 350 beds. And when you say beds, that's just... That's not just people to sleep on. It means that they have so many responsibilities and they get food and they get so many things. Why don't you give everybody an insight into what happens when you have a new student who comes there and what happens? Our new students are provided with all of their basic needs. Everything that they need uh, for comfort, shelter, food, clothing, toiletries, anything that they need so that all they need to do is focus on their recovery and getting well and healing. And that takes, that takes time. But you can't do that if your basic needs aren't met. And so many of them come from the streets or they have nowhere to go. Uh, families have had enough and So they usually come to us after they've been through multiple recovery places, the 30, 60, 90 day places, um, and they haven't fixed the problem. So the the families are done. Many of them end up stealing from their families or, you know, these, the people, I envy people who don't enable the addict because every addict needs an enabler. And without that, then they are forced to seek the recovery. Until then, the enabler um, uh, helps them to avoid any circumstances. And How do they do that, Judy? Let's say that you have a son or a daughter and they're living at home, or sometimes they don't live at home. What is it that you have to do? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd like that question. I do, I do, um, because I'm learning. I'm, I've got a PhD equivalent in enabling, so... <laughs> um, the first thing they need to do is they need to get out of the, the way of God, who's the one that's going to change their lives. We have a tendency to make excuses for their behavior. Um, we step in and help them avoid consequences of their actions, whether it be legal or, you know, someplace to sleep, whatever it is, every addict has consequences of their actions. Just like any time you do something wrong, you get scolded as a child, you get scolded, you were punished. Well, those punishments are put into place to help you learn from the mistakes you make. So when us, and I say us as enablers, help the addict, we're not helping the addict. But when you think about it, and you just brought up as a child, many of them do become children in a way. If they're suffering and you... Do you just turn them out of your house and then who knows what happens to them? So there's got to be a lot of guilt. And that's where codependency comes in. Codependency is a disease all of its own. It's why I call it a family disease. Um, You've got the, every family has a user, an enabler, usually the high achiever, the scapegoat, and the clown. Okay, every family, that's the DNA of a family that has an addiction issue. So you, but if you eliminate the enabling, then 
the addict has to face the consequences of their actions, whether that be homelessness or jail, hospital, or even death and sometimes. And that's what that's that's where the codependency really comes in because how do you live with that? Um, it's the same thing like suicide or anything else. When do you know? How do you know what those boundaries are? And how do you know when to step in and help and when to support? There's a fine line between supporting and enabling. And learning what that fine line is is key in codependency. And so at Faith Farm, do you have programs to teach the people who are the enablers? No. That would be a family ministry, which would have been, that's one of my goals is to be involved in a family ministry. Um, and Faith Farm has talked about adding that component to their program over the years. Right now, it's the focus is on the addict. It, ideal situation, the family member understands that they also need recovery and they attend a program similar to what we call a Celebrate Recovery or even a, um, a Al-Anon. There's a teen, teen, teen version of the Al-Anon, um, which is for codependents. And they need their own recovery. So their recovery is separate from the addict's recovery. But it's very similar. Addicts, I find, are also enablers. They're also codependent, very codependent. And sometimes that's what drives them into the addiction. Oh, that's amazing. My guest is Judy Walters. She's project manager for Faith Farm Ministries. And and Judy is someone who actually you see that she writes the articles every month in Boomer Times. She's a, a great writer. She She's the person, she's the go-to person at Faith Farm. That's what I always say. <laughs> I do what everybody else doesn't yeah. want to do. Yeah, well, well, no, but you've been... You know, you've been struggling with a lot of things personally, but you're, I, I just referred to Judy as the, the, the ever-ready bunny, right? <laughs> you know, she just, uh, she just keeps going. And that's why when I go to the graduations and I see the torment on the faces of the graduates and they look at their family members, they know what they put them through. But I always figure out it's too hard for them not to do this. And that's why... They have to go to a place that's very experienced in not enabling and giving them something else to look forward to. Maybe that's what they don't have. It gives them hope, and they learn how to cope. They learn coping skills. Um, you mentioned the graduations, and that is a real stepping stone to the future. Those graduations, getting up and sharing your story and being transparent. Addicts are my favorite people. Addicts in recovery because they're so brave and so transparent. They've been to hell and back and they figure it out. The nine month or 10 month program that Faith Farm gives them allows them enough time to really understand what they've done to their family members, that their family members are affected too. Up till that point, before they get recovery, it's all about them. It's a very self-centered lifestyle. Everything revolves, the whole world revolves around the addict. In the same respect, the codependent will look at the addict and say, it's all your problem. It's not my problem, it's your problem, when in fact, the codependent is often the cause of the continued addiction. So, How so? Explain because, that. Like I said, because every addict needs an enabler. And if you don't have that enabler, then they can't, be an addict for very long because the consequences will put them either homeless or in a jail cell or in a hospital bed. And probably they say to the person, you don't love me and that's why you're not right. Oh, that, the guilt that, trip. That, that, sure. That's the guilt trip, right? Sure. Sure. Well, let's just take um, people who have come there and uh, it's, it must be very difficult to all of a sudden not go back to their old ways. How, how does that work? They de they develop, uh, well, first of all, they are told how much they are loved and how unique and special that they were created to be. Um, many of them are so beaten down and don't have any self-worth. Why would you even care about yourself if you have no self-worth? 
So you're, you know, once your physical basic needs are met, after that is when you be able to focus on your self-worth, your, your, um, it's the value of who the value. You are, right? Yes. To you, yourself, and, to, your family, and to understand that you society. have to understand who you were created to be and that you're not a mistake, that there is a reason for you to be here. And you have a purpose. And, when, and through that, we, we introduce them to their creator. And in the Bible, it shows them how much they're loved, that they were uniquely created and loved. And there is no mistakes. The God knows exactly where they are, and he can use the... He can't use you unless you're broken. Okay? <laughs> it's that's like, pretty s- serious. Yeah, yeah. And because that's when you begin to need him, and then you understand... Um, what you're here for. You have a lot so. of people uh, watching you on Facebook. Do I? Yes, you do. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, okay, well, let's, um, let's then go through. I, one thing I don't want to forget is, and I started off saying how important it is for them, for Faith Farm, to raise money to take care of yes. all the issues. So let's talk about what you do have coming up. Okay, well, one of the ways that we do make money, which supports, which supports the program. This is what puts the men and the women through the program at no expense to them is our major, major thing is our thrift stores. Um, we, nobody does thrift like Faith Farm. That's my That's new tagline. Because you will go to many, many different thrift stores and you will not find one like Faith never. Farm. Right, never. Um, and, and, and the other thing you should know that thrift stores were created to be a support for charity, support for nonprofits. And now, over the last 10 years or so, there's so many thrift stores that have opened up that are for profits, but they disguise themselves. So you don't know where your money's going. It's going in somebody's pocket if it's a for profit. Okay, so just understand business, not all thrift charity. stores are for charities. Ask them where the money goes. Okay, 100% of all the money that is raised by our thrift stores through your donations or through your purchases, like my whole house is thrift, <laughs> Faith Farm decor, okay? <laughs> and I'm sure it's beautiful. It is. It is. I love it. When I get tired of a couch, I'll donate it back <laughs> and get another one. That's very good. Um, anyway, our sales are, are huge, we will turn the floor in six, you know, six times during one of our big sales. So our sales are really huge. Um, and they are up to 75% off in the all the as is department and up to 20 up to 50% off select items in our new furniture. That's one one of the things that makes Faith Farm unique. We sell new furniture. No other thrift store does that. Not only do we sell new furniture, but we now finance it. Amazing. So yeah. you can be approved yeah. within three minutes to finance <laughs> uh, your purchase. And um, one, the, one thing I think, I don't know if people knew that sometimes when there are big fires in apartment buildings or something and people are left without anything, that Faith Farm jumps in and you yes. offer it for them to come to your to you, of course, your faith form. And select what and they select, need. That's, yes. well, that's why you're there. You yes. help people, whether, you know, they're addicts or just need help. Each of our campuses has a certain amount allocated to donate to the needy in the community. I did not know that yes. either. So that's great. Yes. So let's uh, let's take someone who's uh, now here at Faith Farm. Show, and we don't have to talk to the women because we have so many more men. Tell us what a man is life his days going to be like okay they get up in the morning bright and early which many of them have not done in a long time uh they go to breakfast they have a very we have great cooks our food is is really good in all three campuses it's really you know it's not like hospital food at all it's very good stuff um and we do that through donations of food and we purchase food as well um, our students do receive, the ministry receives food stamps on behalf of the students. So that pays for most of the food. And then we do get donations as well. Um, so they have breakfast. Then they go to chapel. Um, 
sometimes it's just a quiet time for reading scripture and meditating or whatever. Uh, hopefully they're not sleeping. Sometimes when they first come into the program, they got to get with the program. Uh, after that, they go to class. They have an hour's worth of class in the morning, every morning. Depending on which phase they're in, there are four phases. There's specific curriculum for each phase, and it's all builds on the previous phase. So when they're done with the program, we have a we have a goal set on what that graduate is supposed to look like, as far as their their Christian walk, their recovery lifestyle. Um, are they giving back to the community? Have they made restoration? All this all these things. So by the time they're done with the program, they're really ready to go. They're ready to graduate. I want to, I, I don't know if you said when the date for the sale. I, I, the sale is going to, well, there's, yes, the next sale is an unadvertised sale. We call these our VIP sales. So anybody listening today is considered a VIP. You're getting in on the scoop. It's September 14 and 15. It's next weekend. Saturday and Sunday. Friday. No, oh, Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Our September stores are closed 15th. on Sunday. Okay. The 14th and the 15th. Yes, ma'am. And it's from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. at both the Boynton Beach store and the Fort Lauderdale store. All right. And what are the, what's the sale? 75% off. 75% Up to off. 75% off in all the as-is. And up to 50% off in the new furniture. Okay, so now if people want to buy some large items, how will they transport them home? They can either take it themselves, rent a truck, whatever, or we can deliver. For a nominal fee, we will deliver. Um, and it basically just pays for the gas and maintenance on the trucks. We have 29 trucks out picking up donations. See, that's really important. So and, you can see this is not a small potato <laughs> here. <laughs> and we have a garage that maintains all of those trucks along with the fleet of, of vans that pick up food and, and courier the students to their doctor's appointments and all this stuff. So um, the the trucks, when we have a big sale, if, they're, if they have a purchase that they can't deliver themselves, they can arrange for a delivery. We have a couple trucks set aside during our big sales just for that. So, yeah. That's that, really wonderful. And I know there'll be more sales in the future. Of course, keep listening to Boomer Times where we do a lot of this advertising for them. But also, there is a car. And this is a wonderful thing. You want to talk? That's in November, you said? No, it's actually October 27th. October. Oh, my goodness. It's Saturday, October 27th, an auto auction. 100% of the proceeds go to the program. And we have, I believe, over 60 cars this time uh, for auction. And that's fun. That's an exciting event. I've been there. I mean, the cars are fantastic. So yep. you have people who are mechanics now who we have come mechanics. into the program and they paint and they clean the cars up. And, they and we have a collision them. specialist that does body work and paints. We have a paint booth. So once, once we determine mechanically that everything is okay with the car or if we need to fix something, that'll happen first. And then if it needs any cosmetic work, we could do that right there on the I site too. I have to tell too. you, I've never had so many people on Facebook Live since of all the ones I've done, I think I have 15. No kidding. I've never had that many. This really is great for you. So it's good. Beautiful. Okay, so let's, I want to go back to that. But the thing is, let's get the cars there first. So if you have a car, and you'd like to donate it. Cars, trucks, the... boats, um, RVs, uh, motorcycles, jet skis with trailers. I mean, we, we have it all. And so you, they donate it. Yes. And then these are, you know, repaired or reconditioned or whatever. Has to be. Yes. And then I know I've been there before where they just, one comes in and then the next one comes in and the next one yes. comes in. And you better be quit pretty fast because they go fast. You're going to have a lot of people at this. I hope so. Oh, you will. We have to do, we have to, our next ad, and we're working on our October issue. We need to get something right now. I'll get now the ad to you that. this week. Oh, we, we That'd ought be to awesome. do the whole thing. You ought to write about it and all. It's okay. like very exciting. So that there you go. There's my next article. Because you've made a lot of money with these cars. We do. You? We do. Um, and at this time of the year, you know, the parents are buying for their kids who have gone off to college. 
you know, and that's a great thing. We have uh, a lot of snowbirds that don't want to take their cars back north, so they'll donate them. We have uh, this with the senior population, you know, we have estates and the student or the children live up north and they don't want to deal with it. They'll donate the cars. Some of them are in great shape. Right. People just keep signing on. To in fact, you. we have a Jaguar back there to this you time. Do. We do. It's I don't know anything about it other right. than it looks really pretty, but we Good. do have a Jaguar in the back. Well, let me just tell you, everybody better get get on their horse to get there <laughs> to the, and that's going to be, as you, it said, in November. We don't, do we have the actual date? You said the. The auto auction? I'm sorry, that's in October. October 27th. October the 27th. Okay, so it starts early in the morning at 9. And watch, watch for the article and add and in Boomer the Times. Boomer Times. Yeah, it's, that's great. I'm so happy. All right. So, you see, that's something that some of the people who come in as students, if they have that talent, they could be working there Absolutely. doing that. Yes. And, and are there people who come in and you... Which makes the rest of their day, a lot of most of their day. They do go to work. After class, they go to work. And that could be... In the store, it could be on the dock, it could be in the call center, it could be in the kitchen. Do they get to choose? No. They don't? No. They are assigned. Wow. Yeah. So what it... So if you have a, a guy that's been a chef, you don't put him to cook? Not necessarily. Right. Because sometimes they become too prideful. And I was And that might be an obstacle to their recovery. I was just going to say that, that maybe they need to get into something else that's a challenge, right? Exactly. Most of the guys will start out on maintenance or landscaping. And that's a humbling thing. They may not like it at all, but it is a humbling thing. And once they're humbled and will do the work, then God rewards. <laughs> that's okay, so, wonderful. But that the work is the work is a key component to our program. We are a work program. They're not paid. It's not, you know, a lot of people are are misled to think that it that's all we're doing is we're working these students. They're taking, they're, for, they're paying for their room and board, actually. Well, they actually are. That's what but they're doing. But more important is the lessons that they learn right. working right next to their supervisor who is there for them all the time. If they have a problem, if they have a, a, a meltdown, if they are having trouble dealing with something, there's somebody to counsel them all the time. Not only that, but they learn conflict resolution. They learn teamwork. Uh, let alone the skills that they learn. Because our, there was a guy that worked in our new furniture department as a salesperson. He took his new furniture CWT, which is our comprehensive work training program. We have a manual for each one of them. It's a program in itself. It's like a, we call it the Comprehensive Work Training Institute at Faith Farm. And so they're learning vocational skills that they can take with them when they leave. And one of the fellows took his whole new furniture CWT binder to a furniture store and they hired him on the spot. Well, you know all that, yeah. you know, so they hired him on the spot. That's our goal is to connect uh, with companies in the various trades that we teach in and see if we can guarantee an interview at least. Maybe not the job, but guarantee that they somebody from that company will talk to them. So I want everyone to write this down, faithfarm.org. That's how you're going to get all the information about the sales or what you can, when they're going to have graduations. You're welcome to go to all these things, but faithfarm.org is the website, and you'll find so much on there. Um, I, I just, you know, I have such appreciation. I've told so many people before on the radio that you really are my favorite charity. I mean, because I know so much about you. I know what you do. Uh, every last cent and, is and there. And we value your support well, so much. I, I, I can't tell you. I have never met any of the people working there, but the what job you do is so amazing to me. I mean, I have been to many, many of your events, and there's such joy when you see people. They're happy. They're, they're so satisfied. I've, I've been where... They've come up to some of your executives and they say, you've saved my life. I'll never forget you. I mean, they go on and on and on. And, and then, of course, the family members feel the same way. Yeah, we've given them the place and the time to really. I, if I had nine months of my own life where I didn't have to work and I could just spend nine months with God alone 
to try to really dig into him and figure out all, you know, understand him and have him reveal to me different things. And who wouldn't want that? Yeah. What a gift. Faith yeah. Farm is a gift to these people. It is. Let, let's not forget the women. I know I've cut, yeah. I didn't want to cut them short, but that's something that also you brought on. And that wasn't always, I think it's been over a certain amount of years. That was never done when it, it first started. Was formed it was formed in 1990. So it's going on 38 years? No. no. 38 years? No. 90 is 38? 28 years. 28. Sorry. Right. I don't do no, numbers. No, no, no. It's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> because I know, you see, that I've been involved with you all when you didn't really have many. And I know <laughs> that, that you've taken them on, and then you've seen that they really do add a tremendous amount. I think the call center is where they're really good. That's where the women work, yes. yes. They and have then, that, that right. certain customer service right. skill set. And they also work, of course, in the faith, in the uh, thrift shops, too. They do. They're Sometimes cashiers, they work in there. They, they have their own kiosk out front where they sell yeah. hot Cookies, dogs. And, I know. I've been there. And then they, they right. make jewelry and they sell jewelry. Um, well, and they, t they detail the cars for the auto, auto auction. Detail the cars. Well, Judy, it been always goes too fast. But you're, there's not a better representative that I could have on this show. Oh, thank you. you. You're so good. Thank Remember, you so faithfarm.org. Thank you so much, Judy. And thanks, everybody, for um, tuning in. Bye. Bye.